Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's information session about the certificate programs in Python for algorithmic trading, computational finance, and asset management. My name is Eve. I'm founder and the CEO of the Python Quants as well as of the AI machine. Yo, I have roughly planned for an hour. Um, we are going to talk about our programs. Um, we are not going into too many details because there are actually too many of them available, but the major goal is to give you an overview of what to expect from our programs and how our programs can benefit your career in finance or maybe a project uh, that you have in mind uh, yeah, to be formed as a startup company, for example, right? So these days uh, we are living in exciting times and we think in terms of Python and what Python can do for you, not only in the finance space, but today this is our particular focus. Uh, yeah, I think you will see a ton of information uh, that might clarify uh, your questions with regard to how the programs will benefit you. Let me dive into my slide deck. I've shared the link already in the chat. So if you want to follow along and um, you can also um, yeah, post your questions in the Q&A section. Um, so I will every once in a while have a look at the questions and then I try to answer them whenever, whenever I feel uh, this to be appropriate. Wonderful. Yeah, the agenda here has quite a few points. As I said, we have a ton of content that we offer uh, in the form of our programs. And um, we'll get started uh, with a brief introduction, go into the program, what our quant platform is about, and then we go through the single classes that you have access to in our programs. And towards the end, I will uh, yeah, go through more uh, general topics such as the study plans for programs and guiding principles and how reviews, exercises and test projects might benefit you. So uh, also here we've got the user form Discord server, which we use intensively to provide support and I will close with a summary. So I uh, see a comment with regard to audio. If there are any issues with regard to audio or anything else, please let me know in the Q&A section. All right, let's move on to the introduction part. Um, yeah, the Python quants. What, what are we about? Uh, the name says it already. It's Python and finance, in particular quant finance. We provide services. We run events in the space. We uh, offer primarily, as our business purpose, trainings and training programs. Uh, we have developed a quant platform uh, where we have, uh, I don't know, close to 40,000 registered users, uh, by which we provide the training content as well as, for example, the content and code that the company uh, my books. We have open sourced a couple of libraries and we provide a certification here as well, so that once people have successfully finished our programs, they can show to potential uh, employers, for example, what they have achieved. Yeah, that's what the Python Quants is about. Many different areas that we cover, but the core topic is Python for finance. We also uh, run a proprietary trading platform in the form of the iMachine, uh, where we can deploy kind of easily Python-based AI-powered algorithmic trading strategy in a yeah, pretty much standardized fashion. Um, if you are interested in my background, uh, me as a program director, here is a long version. I'm not going through this. This is just for you as reference. Uh, I have published a couple of books on the topic financial theory of Python is the introductory book, you know, which came out last year, actually in 2021. And it's meant to be a gentle introduction into both finance and at the same time into Python as well. That I think is, uh, yeah standard work of those that I've written. It's Python for Finance in the second edition. Uh, yeah, and the subtitle says it, I think, Mastering Data to Finance. So we've come a long way in the area. And uh, finance without the processing of data, uh, I think, is something that you won't find anymore. When I started a couple of decades ago, actually, with finance, uh, yeah, many endeavors have been theoretical only. But these days, data is what drives the whole discipline. My other books here that you see from O'Reilly is uh, or are about Python for algorithmic trading and artificial intelligence and finance against the background of algorithmic trading. So the two of them are outgrowths of classes that we have developed first for the, for the programs and then for um, yeah, 
book publication. And that's basically how it works. So our program delegates usually get access to the content first, uh, sometimes uh, much, much earlier than those who finally rely on books, right? But still we are using, of course, then the books as well for the programs to provide the content in a more detailed fashion than let's say just on the basis of notebooks. These are the quant finance books. They build the basis for our computational finance uh, class classes. I must say we have uh, three computational finance classes: derivatives, analytics with Python, as well as listed volatility and variance derivatives. I would say these topics and these classes are, from a mathematical point of view, the most demanding ones. Um, yeah, because simply the, the material that is to be implemented and that is discussed there is yeah highly mathematical in that sense. So if you're interested in option, option pricing, hedging, etc., these are the classes you might be looking for. So the program itself, and you might ask why a program? Uh, there are so many offerings with regard to Python out there uh, these days, also with regard to Python for finance. Yeah, I'm pretty sure and I'm convinced that our program is the most comprehensive that you will find in the space. Um, you can do it in a rather compact format over the course of 16 weeks, like four months. Or you can do it completely self-paced. So recently we've introduced um, yeah, quite a new structure which allows you to do the program, in particular the Platinum one, which encompasses all the classes that we have in a fully self-paced fashion. Because many, many professionals out there, they simply have a requirement to be as flexible as possible because they have already demanding schedules. And uh, you know, this might prevent them to follow along a more rigid uh, regimen that we uh, implement with our 16-week program. But you can combine the two elements uh, with each other as well. So you can say you want to have um, a more rigid study plan for some parts and you can do other parts in a more self-paced fashion. So here you have all the flexibility in the world. We provide you with thousands and thousands of lines of Python code that are yeah, ready to use, I would say, right? With some adjustments, you can often transfer them more or less one-to-one -to, -one to your own problems. We have so many Jupyter notebooks, hard to count these days, with hundreds of hours of instruction and also the documentation in particular, when you think of the platinum package, the full package, if you like, uh, well, we have uh, more than 2,500 pages of HTML and PDF documentation. So it's quite a bit. I would say it almost uh, reaches the, uh, the level of a master's program. Therefore, what I was saying before, I'm pretty convinced that this is uh, yeah, the most comprehensive Python for finance program that you will find on the market. Now you might say, why Python after all? There's so many other alternatives out there in terms of uh, languages, in terms of tools and, and um, technology platforms. Yeah, I, I try to keep it short. This is a recent e-financial career uh, article, which says it all from my point of view. Um, if you want a banking job now, you need to code in Python. It's not only banking, it goes for the whole finance industry. And here is the, I would say, the most important part and the most important conclusion. And this article is written by a practitioner, somebody who hires people in the space. And therefore, if you're trying to get into banking now, Python is the skill that's needed Python will get, you, uh, will get you a job across the banking industry in anything from sales and trading to portfolio management or risk. It is the one skill that really differentiates applicants in the recruitment process. Right? And um, it's like the industry has evolved tremendously. So it's not enough uh, from experience these days that you say, well, I know a little bit of Python. <laughs> I have one book on my shelf. So these days, um, Job applicants are competing with uh, people who have done Python for years now. And if you run through our program and, and complete that successfully, pretty sure that uh, potential employers uh, will uh, value uh, this particular skill or these skills that you have acquired. On the other hand, if you want to build your own startup in the fintech space, for example, or let's say in the algorithmic trading area, you are equally well equipped right, to tackle the typical problems that you face with such an endeavor. Our client platform is the central uh, delivery um, means that we have. The platform provides you with all the content once you have a lockup, which is, of course, what you get when you sign up for our programs. You have access to all the videos, to all the code, to all the Jupyter Notebook that I have shown before in numbers, right? So this is the, the central area. I will jump onto the client platform with a little demo. Uh, in, in a few minutes, right? So at this stage, it's just to say we have our own proprietary platform where which you get access to everything 
uh, in practical terms, you wouldn't even need to have a local Python installation in order to get started with our program because even the code execution or the coding exercise, etc., that can all be uh, done on the platform. Right? So that's the message here. I and mean, recently it came out, I mean, it's now a while back with uh, what we called Quant Platform 2.0. And we have it now, uh, given of, yeah, given the experience that we have garnered over the, over the, the years, the, the many, many years, we have now tailored it to the very needs um, of our programs and in particular of our delegates. So now let us jump already into the content itself. So one of the uh, largest, longest classes actually with some 40 plus modules is mathematics basics driven by demand from recent delegates. Uh, if don't you have something where I can review the, the most important mathematical concepts? I started the class uh, recently, um, which is called Mathematical Basics, which is about reviewing fundamental mathematical mathematics concepts based on simple Python code. If you like, right, uh, this is a class which introduces math concepts and Python code at the same time. So the two of them reinforcing each other. And uh, if your math is a little bit rusty or you simply want to get uh, first gentle introduction to math as implemented, uh, in the form of Python code, that's your starting point. I sometimes recommend that you start maybe before the cohort starts, before you get into the other um, topics, classes that you start with uh, this particular class. This should be at the pace which is uh, well, well suited, even for a, I would say, absolute beginner with Python here, right? So that's the fundamental one. We have then another class which is about crypto basics. So crypto has. Uh, generated uh, quite a few uh, news headlines recently, right? Um, what will happen in the space is not the topic of this class. It's rather uh, that this class is about the basic building blocks and mastering these basic uh, building blocks um, of the crypto space in the form, for example, of hashing algorithms, uh, encryption, what is the blockchain all about, how does mining work, et cetera, et cetera, right? So this is about the basics. And I think the technologies, they have been around in part since quite a long while, and they will stick around for uh, yeah, a long while, I would say, right? And uh, uh, to have a good grasp of what is going on there, I think it's pretty important. Therefore, we have created also rather recently the Crypto Basics class here in particular. This is, for example, something where I would say you don't need to get started with that. You can uh, postpone that and maybe later on, if time allows, dive into this particular part. Finance with Python is one of the most basic classes that we offer. Um, this particular class is, uh, I could say, based on the book Financial Theory of Python, but I explained it before. The book is basically an outgrowth of multiple years of teaching uh, the contents there. So, but today, of course, the two go hand in hand. And this is about a gentle introduction to finance Python and the combination of both. So, this is really now finance combining with Python and covering really fundamental topics in the finance area because we have regularly delegates with maybe strong programming background but uh, maybe a little finance knowledge only right uh, or the other way around we have people starting out in the space like students pretty young students uh, we've had in the past and i said well i want to learn the finance as well as uh, programming at the same time because i learned that this is uh, now the combination to go with and this class basically does both tricks introduces finance as well as Python at the same time. For example, in the form of simple financial economies, um, um, but also in the form of more sophisticated uh, economies like dynamic models for the pricing of options, let's say. But uh, it's not going as far as our quantitative finance, our computational finance classes go, but it's a good introduction basically to all the other finance oriented um, um, classes. Yeah, there's a very specific question whether there's an introduction into quantum finance. And to be honest, no, so far not. Um, this is a topic which, from my experience, doesn't have yet the importance for uh, people in the space yet as compared to the topics that we cover. It is a pretty amazing topic, that's for sure. Um, but uh, quantum finance in and of itself, uh, based on quantum computing, etc., this uh, uh, might still be a little out, on, although I'm a big uh, fan and highly interested in that, but so far the demand is not yet fully there. We cover already quite a bit of ground, 
tons and tons of uh, finance, but uh, of course, uh, such a program cannot cover everything. Like, when, even when you think in terms of a master's program, the master's program cannot cover uh, everything at the same time. Um, I now want to show you briefly here um, um, the Quant platform based on finance with Python. Gentle introduction here, finance, Python, and the combination of both. And I want to show you how this uh, might look like, right, when you dive into the Quant platform, because this is one of the first uh, classes um, that you are supposed to go through, no matter whether you want to specialize in one of the fields like asset management, let's say, or algorithmic trading, or whether you want to go with all the content that we offer. Right. So here you see like the starting page, we call this a dashboard. You see the latest videos there. These are the three latest videos. So we recently had a algorithmic trading bootcamp, uh, which have uh, which has had six sessions. Right, and the three latest one are shown here. You can search the trainings according to topics, right? You see down here also the latest uh, forum posts. So here's a question with regard to a YAML file to uh, replicate a Conda environment or the, the frame method, which was deprecated recently with pandas and so forth. And you could dive in there. But I want to focus at this point here on the finance with Python class. And you see here the major navigation points um pdf books they come only with the um uh, the platinum package that's uh, if you like one of the elements of the platinum package the user portal which i've shown you the latest um, elements the courses here ai and finance finance with python and courses uh, maybe it's a little bit of a misnomer so this is about uh, the, the html based content plus the code so i will show you this in a second and here you find the trainings this is the largest part Right, if you recall the agenda, right? the trainings. So what I now would like uh, to get started with Finance with Python. I can click on Finance with Python and you see here the text. This is a earlier version of the final print version of the book where you see here the different chapters like Finance with Python, uh, two-state economy, uh, three-state economy, et cetera, PP. So here are the uh, chapters also presented in the preface, right? And you could navigate now when I was talking about a little bit more advanced topics like dynamic economy. What is covered here is like Scold's uh, model as well as the Cox Ross Rubinstein uh, model here, binomial option pricing and Monte Carlo simulation. So you find like text, you find math, you find finance in here. And what you also find is code. And this is like, this holds true for all the other um, Elements as well. For those of you who know one of my books, uh, the style I would say is uh, quite similar, in particular when you compare the O'Reilly books, right? You usually have call outs uh, with detailed explanations of every single line in the code here presented. But by no means you would need to copy and paste. You see, I've marked this here. So sometimes when you go to a blog post, you might mark something and then copy and paste it. This is nothing that you um, that you would need to do. The code is provided in the form of Jupyter Notebooks as well. So no need to do any copy and paste or whatnot. But you have the text, you have uh, explanations, you have uh, the code presented here as well. Furthermore, there is also a class which is called Finance with Python. You see it here. When I click on Finance with Python, the whole screen changes. Um, this is the description of the class. Here you see the first um, section. The second one, we call this modules as well, right? Um, and this class is a short one. It's an introduction one, has six modules. And what does it mean? Modules, you have, let's say here, the video that you can watch here on the one platform, right? So this now runs and will generate some. Um, um, uh, yeah, some audio as well. So I've stopped it. You can, of course, go forwards and backwards. You can um, you can increase, for example, this was also a requirement for delegates, increase the uh, the playback speed here, right? And I say, well, I like to watch this uh, two times, the original speed. So you can choose two times here, right? And you can also, um, in, this, uh, in this context, yeah, go back and forth and rewatch and I mean there is no time limit or whatnot uh, because we know and from experience meaning the feedback that we receive from uh, people um, we um, have sometimes people that watch such a video multiple times three four times until they've mastered the content but this is uh, from experience something that happens in the beginning once you have more experience 
uh, I would say there is no uh, real need to um, uh, repeat this multiple times because your CRASP, your framework is simply uh, uh, much improved and then you can CRASP new content uh, much faster. If you are somebody like myself who likes to put notes, you can uh, insert notes here, right? Uh, this um, is, is my first note. And you can timestamp this, for example, um, and then I can add the note here. Um, and you can, whatever you want to write or note, or you want to bookmark something, for example, then later on you can jump to the very point here in the, um, in the video where you have made your notes. So this hopefully simplifies uh, mastering the content that we presented, because you recall we have um, yeah, 250 plus hours of instruction, that's quite a bit in this context. And notes are also searchable, right? And you can, when you say, well, this was just a temporary note, you can uh, clear them as well. So that's one video, just one of the many, many videos that you find. And I said, you don't need to type anything. When I click, for example, here on the, um, on the notebook name, it opens Jupyter Lab on the Quant platform, and you can actually code the code there. All right, so it takes a bit because we fire up a Docker container in the back end, and um, uh, this takes a few seconds if it's not running, right? Let me readjust this a little bit. You've seen I've increased the zoom. Um, I prefer personally uh, the, the dark mode. If you say, well, I'm uh, one who likes the, the lighter mode, you can change that here as well. Um, so this uh, might take a bit. Let me, let me stick to the dark one there. Um, and to see now the Jupyter Notebook, which belongs to the video that I've shown before, which belongs to the chapter about which the video is. And then you can, yeah, or it's still initializing, so it, it's, it takes a the time uh, here, as long as it says initializing, right? It has changed now. Now it's idle, you're good to go. Let me get back to my black, to my dark theme. Um, now initialization is finished and I can move now through the code and execute the code which accompanies the chapter. This is very, you see it already, very simple Python code, just one-liners in parts explained, but the major explanation is given uh, in the text basically as well as in the book base, in, in the video um, um, where I provide many, many comments about the different elements there, right? So you can go through the notebook, you can also save the notebook, you can also download the notebook, right? We don't have any login or whatnot. When I say you can execute everything on the Quant platform, it doesn't mean that you can execute it locally. You can download every single um, Jupyter notebook that we provide or other uh, code files can be downloaded and executed uh, locally as well. So no login or whatnot, uh, it's all open. Uh, the content is yours. Of course, there are uh, copyright restrictions, et cetera, that apply. But um, if you sign up with our program, you have full access to all the resources that we provide. So this is um, the platform and the basic structure of almost all the classes. You might have a text, you have videos, you have code, you can execute the code, and you might have additional resources. Like here, you see there's a link to a uh, there's a link to a presentation. Um, which accompanies this particular video, right? So this is hosted on one of our servers. So here you see um, the, um, the slide deck that is used in the video from which I just got the link, right? So all the resources in a single place and usually uh, code, slides or whatever, uh, or video just one click away. Of course you can, if you have multiple screens, for example, like I use here two screens, you could have the video running on one screen and you might have a look at the code at the same time on another screen. All this is possible, right? So let me maybe uh, shut down Jupyter Notebook um, here. But this would give you a basic idea of how the clock Quant platform and how the content delivery works, right? So I need to confirm here. And once you get stuck, um, of course, you can use 24 seven um, the user forum, right? Where you can create new posts or what many people do these days is to first search the user forum sometimes, or we could say these days because we have uh, quite a few posts already. 
they find the answer in the forum or for example if your question is let's say a sub question to another thread you can also uh, go to that thread and, and ask maybe a more detailed question or you simply create a new post in this um in this uh area here right so uh, we try to get back uh, latest uh, within 24 hours usually if it's german business time it's much much faster that we can get uh, back to you in this regard. So let me check briefly um, the question. Ah, yeah, there's something with regard to natural language processing. Uh, bear with me. Um, this is one of the classes that I will cover uh, a little bit later. We have a class on NLP. Yeah, pretty good question and also hot topic. So tools and skills. I think what also differentiates our offering from some others out there is that we um, focus on teaching you at least basic tools and the basic skills beyond Python. So with regard to software development, uh, let's say documentation, version control, etc. You see here the overview. So first and foremost, the installation of a proper environment on the systems, uh, Mac and Linux, as well as Windows based on regular installs on Docker, uh, based on cloud usage as well, so remotely. Then code editing with Wim, you might ask why Wim, Eve? Uh, yeah, we also cover, for example, Sublime, which is also a good editor, but Wim is something that you can use on any platform. You can also use it on a server or within a Docker container, for example. That's the reason why we focus on that. So lightweight uh, tool chain here, screen Wim plus Q for logging and debugging, doc tests, unit tests, Git version control, the packaging of Python projects, the documentation, code hosting via GitHub, as well as um, as well as a case study. <laughs> or now you find nowadays you find multiple case studies which combines the tool into one project for illustration purposes. As mentioned before, it's not only that we say, well, fire up Jupyter on your local machine and go. No, uh, we cover also Docker to some extent and in some detail, as well as the working with clouds with many or multiple case studies that we offer in this context. So we, when we talk about infrastructure, we try to see it uh, more comprehensively than just saying, uh, we assume that you have installed locally Anaconda distribution, whatnot, right? Um, this is... Uh, not the case we we explain i would say with all the relevant details um, to set up a proper python infrastructure even in the cloud when you might for example want to deploy your algorithmic uh, trading programs that need to run 24 7 right so these are uh, different requirements that maybe let's say for a simple calculation that you implement locally as usual, you will find videos, sometimes uh, two videos for the same topic, for the same module, because we then differentiate in the uh, Windows and Linux world, Linux uh, with a Mac, and maybe other resources like code repositories or whatever is appropriate uh, to uh, give you the easiest access to the, uh, the resources that you require. Assuming that you have an infrastructure available and with a quant platform, you have it from the start available, right? We then dive into the core world of financial data science, right? This is uh, primarily based on the book Python for Finance. The same holds true. This was first taught as a class. Later on, uh, the book was written based on it, right? And here we cover data structures, numerical computing with NumPy, we cover pandas, OOP, object oriented programming, visualization, time series data, input, output, and performance, two of my favorite topics. Also, math tools, stochastics, statistics, and machine learning, as well as the special topic of dates and times uh, based on Python, NumPy, as well as pandas, because these worlds are somehow connected, but they are not exactly the same. Right? So, here covering the most important Python idioms, techniques, and packages for finance. That's a pretty comprehensive class with tons of resources. And it's based on the first three parts um, of the book uh, because part four is about uh, I could trade part five about computational finance. Well, we have much, much more detailed uh, materials in the other classes, right? Python for Excel, something that's still important these days because Excel is still, uh, I would say, almost omnipresent in the financial industry, um, although multiple different technology platforms are used. Excel more often than not still plays an important role. And to 
fire up to turbocharge your Excel analytics and presentation with in the back end with Python code. I think that's a really wonderful thing, right? Combining answer with the analytics power of Python. This is what this class is about. And uh, it's presented based on Windows, although major parts would work on Mac as well, but there are still some limitations in the web world. It best works. Uh, no wonder Microsoft product on the Windows uh, side. Python for databases. Yeah, uh, I emphasize already the, the expression data-driven finance. And yeah, where is data stored? Usually in databases. And this class is about SQL-based databases, uh, MySQL, SQLite, uh, as well as NoSQL, like MongoDB object uh, storage and also Python specific uh, solutions in this context, like PyTables for the fast and efficient storage of large numerical data sets. SQL Alchemy is an abstraction layer to SQL database and BCalls is a um, columnar data store, which has in certain application areas real advantages. And a part of the class is also about comparing the different solutions with regard to their yeah, advantages and maybe disadvantages in terms of performance, in terms of storage that they take, etc. So that's also pretty interesting. I would say still very important when you think in terms of the technologies that are covered there. As usual, you find videos plus resources. Here it's not that much about the notebooks, it's uh, about uh, code that is provided to set up, for example, uh, an SQL and MySQL server in the cloud. So this would assume that you have um, internalize the basics of cloud setup, for example, but therefore in the study plan, as you will see, this comes a bit later. So there was a question with regard to NLP, and uh, here we are now at this uh, place uh, where I can answer the question. Yes, we have a class. It's not the biggest class, I must confess, but we cover very important aspects here, and we provide also, as usual, I can say, uh, wrapper packages and code that is ready to use. So, for example, cleaning up an HTML file, which has tons of CSS and JavaScript or whatnot, uh, is one of the things that you see even here um, shown on the, on the screen there, and uh, much more in this context. And we have quite a few uh, yeah, elaborated, more sophisticated examples, and among others, uh, there was a question specifically uh, asked with regard to the Twitter API. Yeah, the working with the Twitter API, for example, is um, it's related to this topic, but it's uh, covered among other examples in the Python for algorithmic trading class, right? Why am I when you said when you think in terms of algorithmic trading, where well, you might want to rely on social media posts, right? And this is where uh, we cover, for example, accessing uh, the Twitter API and do natural language uh, processing. Right. Again, it's not the, the largest class, but I think we covered like, I don't know, a good portion of, of the important uh, tasks. Uh, it's not enough to go, uh, you know, to rebuild GPT-3 these days, right? Uh, something that is close to human level AI, uh, for sure not. But when, when we are talking about uh, data processing and cleaning um, and sentiment analysis and maybe doing this in real time, this is where this class helps you. It might be a precursor to artificial intelligence and finance because AI algorithms, machine learning algorithms might not only work with numerical data, but also with um, unstructured data. That's for sure. Although the focus in AI and finance lies on numerical, on financial data. But AI and finance has become a core part of the programs because it's so important these days in our industry as it is in other industries as well right um, again the same holds true uh, the the um, the class the classes have been there first and then the book uh, was written here so now they are more synced right because when you write a book um, there are of course a ton of updates that you would like to implement and this is how it works here as well so a lot of feedback and a lot of synergy uh, uh, synergies i would say uh, between writing books and teaching classes based on the same topics. So we have here a total of 24 modules and se sessions in two classes. So again, a wealth of information with regard to the basics of machine learning as applied to finance, as well as with regard to more advanced topics. So uh, when I talk about two classes here, the one class is uh, close to the book, 
The other class is a little bit different in style. The other class focuses more on building, for example, neural networks from scratch and shows you based on uh, yeah, Python code, written out Python code, how these uh, algorithms can be implemented with different um, um, yeah, complications in the sense of uh, improving the performance, for example, the, the training speed of a neural network, etc. So this is what one class is about. The other one is uh, primarily based on standard packages uh, like um, uh, Keras uh, TensorFlow as well as uh, Scikit-Learn in this uh, context, right? So, but you get uh, a lot, a lot of input here in the form of code, in the form of notebooks the videos, the text, etc. So it's quite a bit now. I would say it's it's almost like the core classes in finance, AI in finance here is, we could say, one of the core classes. And another outgrowth here, uh, in addition to the other two classes about basic AI in finance, we have a complete class on reinforcement learning for finance because this is also an important topic in and of itself. And it's also quite a an exciting and demanding topic on the other hand, right? So we get started in this class with basic concepts and we start with the games because this is where the origin of recent success stories lies, right? Playing Atari games or AlphaGo. I mean, AlphaGo or Go as a game is a bit too um, involved for us to cover, but we cover uh, Atari games, for example. And the three examples that we use is the card pole example from the OpenAI gym environment, as well as the mountain car example plus the lunar lander maybe some of you uh, are maybe almost as old as i am uh, you have played lunar lander for example uh, when you were a bit younger or i'm still uh, kind of a retro games fan i every once in a while play the older games and lunar lander at least was one of the games that i was playing when i was much much younger back then right and now we let the agents the reinforcement uh, uh, learning agents play the games where we uh, have uh, cracked our teeth uh, on back in the days, right? So you can, for example, have here a, there are links behind it, and this is uh, from uh, something that we have done there, right, with regard to the Lunar Lander. Uh, it's not a best agent, but it's an agent that was uh, trained successfully. So the, the spaceship here is supposed to land without crashing between the two yellow flags there. You see it's flying pretty slowly, so it's not like um, a high performance uh, agent, but it has, after some training, mastered the game, so it's pretty careful, if you can say. Uh, it takes a little while, and then it will land the spaceship here safely between the two yellow flags. So of course, I show you a successful try. Trust me, I've seen uh, many more unsuccessful ones here, right? But I would say that's the reason why I'm going to show it. Uh, Python for finance it doesn't need to necessarily be uh, a dry material only. It can also be fun. And what we learn in this context here can then easily and hopefully uh, also beneficially apply to the finance domain, right? So that's uh, just the message. It doesn't need to be uh, dry finance stuff only. We can also have a little bit of fun and uh, yeah, play some games, but at least um, based on some code that learns to play the games. There's also an example video behind the other uh, screen there. So there are many uh, links when you go through the slide deck um, behind uh, certain screenshots there. The structure of this class, pretty similar. You have videos, you have uh, Jupyter Notebooks that you can execute, and you have additional materials wherever appropriate. Right, so uh, you might have gained already the feeling there's lots to master, and that's also the reason why I said, well, you don't need to necessarily master if you want to stick to the 16-week program everything at the first run. Right, you can, for example, say reinforcement learning, pretty interesting, but I need to strengthen my Python basics first, and then you can do, for example, this topic a little bit later than indicated in the study plan because there is no harm when you cover this uh, later. You have definite access to all your resources, so uh, there is no need to rush um, if you say, well, nice, but not urgent nor important at this stage. Uh, you can do this later, a month, two or three later. Now getting to the core classes, um, you might know we have three different programs, Python for algorithmic training, Python for um, um, computational finance as well as Python for 
asset management. So depending on the specialization, your certificate will say or mention the respective uh, area uh, or domain of expertise, right? But when you uh, finish the program successfully, or you can combine all the three of them into the platinum packet and to be honest, or the uh, previous um, cohorts and during the summer, well more than 50%, maybe uh, two thirds of all delegates choose the platinum package because it's a, it's a little, a relatively small, let's say relatively small additional fee and you get access to all the resources that we have. And uh, with the flexibility that we provide, um, you can always study like uh, the second and third core class later on as well. Same story, class is first, then the book. Now we have it in sync, right? In this uh, class, we cover uh, financial data science again, vectorized backtesting, prediction-based trading. So this leverages machine learning and AI, which is deepened in the AI and finance class. For example, if you say this is my area of expertise, uh, then AI and finance, for example, might be um, a very good companion class, which you could study um, at the same time, let's say. Event-based backtesting is a more sophisticated approach than algorithmic training based on streaming data. Real-time data is simply something you need to work with, right? The, the training out there is done real time, so you need to react in real time and digest the data in real time. We cover four platforms, uh, Wanda or ONA, as some say, FXCM, Interactive Brokers, and Gemini for crypto trading. And then we have uh, also a couple of case studies for the automation and revenue. Um, in the six week program, there are practice modules one and two, as well as time is planned for the final project, but most, and I would say more than 95, so percent more than 19 out of 20, um, um, take a little bit longer for the final project because most of our delegates are uh, more or less working full time and can dedicate uh, the time to the program, but again, no issue. The whole uh, content is structured along these layers, like infrastructure, financial data, strategy code, backtesting code, connecting code, trading code, and automation. And we go systematically through these layers. Sometimes we repeat certain layers, with, for example, with different uh, backtesting um, approaches, let's say, or different strategies, right? Uh, but that's, um, so to say, the guide or framework uh, based on which we go through the comprehensive content in Python for algorithmic trading. We then have also a Wonder Masterclass because from my point of view, my uh, yeah, more than well, close to 10 years of experience in this particular field and algo trading it is simply the best API for algo trading that you can get on the market. Uh, of course, some might immediately say, well, they don't provide, for example, stocks that you can trade um, um, directly. Yeah, but here we focus on Python for algorithmic trading um, and therefore, we in general put the technology, the APIs, and the data availability first, and the instruments second. Um, many of the techniques can then be transferred to other platforms, but not everything, because this platform is, I would say, the best and most comprehensive that uh, you can get as a retail trader. Python for computational finance, that's my personal background and still one of my favorite topics these days. So I've uh, written my uh, PhD in, in mathematical finance. So that's basically uh, the closest from all the topics that we cover to my uh, origin, right? And uh, you see here the derivatives are related with Python. This was basically the first Python book I have written. <laughs> uh, maybe no surprise that I mentioned that this is my background, right? And this is what brought me into the into the Python um, uh, ecosystem because I was looking for a programming language which was uh, well suited to implement derivatives analytics algorithms and back then when I started using it like 15 years roughly ago people said well it's too slow it's too here it's too there and now uh, we have read it before right Python is the key skill in banking and in finance in general um, so um, fortunately I was right uh, in betting on the Python horse here right so the book has been translated like my other books in other uh, languages as well um, and here you see like the Chinese version but my other books uh, for example Python for finance has been translated into uh, into uh, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Korean, and a couple of other languages. So it's a global topic. And I would say even when the language, um, the written language is translated, the code 
itself stays the same. So the code here, Python, is the real global language in this context. We cover market-based valuation, complete market models like Flex Golds and Coxos Rubinstein, risk neutral valuation to some detail for year pricing, which is so important for a model calibration, um, is covered American options based on the color simulation. Uh, that's uh, yeah, interesting field. Uh, I've spent uh, yeah, a lot of time on this topic in particular, uh, like the least squares in Monte Carlo. A pricing algorithm primary and dual right general market model here will recover stochastic volatility jump diffusion stochastic interest rate interest rates and a bit more Monte Carlo simulation pretty important in uh, the numerical application in computational finance calibration of models hatching of derivatives <coughs> as well as practical applications there as well right so that's roughly the plan in this one class in the in the um, um, in the um, computational finance area. Um, there's a question whether the skills that we offer here can be applied to other domains as well, like the valuation of companies. And I would say yes, for sure. Um, you learn, I hope, I hope, and this is how we try to design the program, that first and foremost, you learn skills that it can apply in any area, right? We provide the content against the background of certain hopefully well-chosen financial applications but afterwards when you have learned when you've mastered the skill you should be able for example when you know how to work with a certain data api and you have mastered uh, the 80 percent of the most important um, functions of pandas uh, that you can then work with another api with different types of data and leverage your panda skills with the different data that you have retrieved from a different um, API. Now think of it like mastering the skill of playing the piano, right? We, of course, teach you to play a certain set of um, scores, different songs, right? Um, but once you are well versed, you have repeated you know, like your scales and your basic exercise, you should be able to master other scores, other songs as well. Right. It's just, uh, that's the idea that I have. We see it more as a skill than something um, where you get um, recipes that you try to memorize. It's not about the recipes. It's about uh, the fundamental concepts and the approaches that you see from different angles applied to different uh, use cases. And then you should be able to generalize them. Right. Very, very good question. Thanks for that. So then we have the class of a list of volatility and variance derivatives where you see the book here. Right. Um, this is about yeah, the so important asset class, um, variance and, and volatilities, right? Uh, where we cover volatility in detail, the strategies and the V stocks index, and how to value volatility derivatives, also advanced modeling techniques, uh, realized variance and variance swaps discovered, all based, of course, A on theory, B based on uh, self contained Python code, right? We also use here DX Analytics, our open source package, to implement the um, valuations uh, in the modeling that are used there. But it's not the primary focus. We focus on teaching you the basics, but we also show how to apply our own open source analytics library here um, to your own benefit in these areas, plus a few add-ons, as you can see here. Uh, speaking of DX analytics, in parallel to the uh, uh, core class, computational finance, we also cover um, more or less the same topics. There are some differences, but I try to keep this um, in sync, at least as far as sensible. Um, we said, well, here with DX analytics, you have a quick start framework, model simulation, European valuation, uh, portfolios for year pricing, you might recall, I said this is an important topic, American valuation which is so important, stochastic short rates. Again, portfolios, you see derivatives portfolios uh, is presented here a few times. Multi-risk, implied volatilities and calibration and hedging. You see, it's somehow in sync, but it's not exactly the same because what DX analytics can do, yeah, it's more comprehensive and in part, at least more advanced than what we cover in the, the core class because the core class is based on a single instrument and therefore on a single primary risk source only and here we allow for multi-risk derivatives we also allow for 
um, uh, derivatives, maybe even complex derivatives portfolio. So this goes, if you like, much further than the computational finance class could go, even let's say with two or three times uh, the number of modules and sessions uh, allocated to it. But you see here how this works and how you can leverage uh, the package to even more complex topics. Here, just a schematic overview of how DX analytics works. It's a forward simulation of cash flows with a uh, backwards um, evaluation, in particular for the optimal exercise of uh, American positions. Uh, it's a non redundant modeling of all the risk factors. You can have multi risk factors for a single derivative, uh, even for the American ones, right? And you form complete portfolios. Uh, the discounting here is done based on the risk neutral valuation paradigm. And uh, you can choose between constant, deterministic, and stochastic. But more on this, all the details that are relevant uh, for you uh, are presented in the respective class. Tier. Again, we have here the layers uh, uh, along which we structure the content. Infrastructure must be there. We need the data. We then have the models here at the core. The models need to be simulated. We need Fourier pricing for the efficient calibration so that we can implement a market-based valuation plus implement numerical hatching procedures. So this, I said it during the introduction, is, um, I would guess, by quite a margin, the mathematically most demanding class or classes, combination of classes that we offer in the program. And I know this might be, in the end, maybe only priority three of the three core classes to many, uh, but nevertheless, at least to cover the basics is beneficial for all the other areas as well. The last core class, Python for Asset Management, um, this is about the basics of risk and return in finance, about mean bearings, portfolio construction, about uh, yeah, major theories in the capital market theory area, like capital asset pricing model, uh, arbitrage pricing uh, theory with multiple risk factors, right? Then we cover alternatives to MVP theory, like risk budgeting and risk parity. And last but not least, we introduce AI and machine learning for asset management in this context. And we also cover at the core in this area, the black litterman model, which allows us to introduce like our views, which we form or which we create based on the AI and machine learning um, approaches that we leverage here uh, into a coherent asset management construction framework, right? So that's also kind of a, I would say comprehensive coverage of the major Python tools related to the topics that you see here on the screen. And not only the tools, of course, it's, it's also about the, uh, the implementation, that's uh, for sure. As usual, you have uh, the videos with the Jupyter Notebooks, with uh, maybe additional resources, uh, references, slide decks, whatever, plus all the code um, that companies, and there are quite a few um, Jupyter Notebooks that um, provide all the code uh, details to migrate maybe from traditional mean variance portfolio theory to AI for asset management and to beneficially leverage the tools and techniques that you might have mastered based on the other class here in this context as well. So AI and finance not only for algorithmic trading and forming of predictions here, it's also used uh, to form uh, portfolios in the asset management context. Cover the basic theory, portfolio selection dating back uh, to 1952. So it's like anniversary a year, right? it's uh, 70 years of modern portfolio selection according to Harry Markowitz. It was worth Nobel Prize in economics, right? So uh, wonderful theory still so many years later and we now have Python and all the data available to implement the whole theory and visualize the results with a few lines of Python code. Um, this was, obviously unthinkable back in the 50s, but I, I like to say this was really the starting uh, point for quantitative finance um, and replaced uh, the more traditional analysis methods like fundamental analysis, etc., uh, by yeah, statistical methods or purely statistical methods in the formation of investment portfolios. But here are the three major um, uh, major resources that you would need. Uh, Python for finance is artificial intelligence and finance, which actually <laughs> yeah, you leverage in the other classes, 
And this is my favorite book um, on portfolio theory, in particular on risk parity and budgeting. So what we cover uh, on the theory side is covered in that book. It's well written, implemented, and in part it's really sophisticated from a mathematical standpoint. Uh, but the basic elements are, um, I think, uh, easy to grasp because it is, from my point of view, so well written. Now with regard to the study plans, um, as mentioned, you can, if you like, and if your time, if your schedule allows, uh, stick to a pretty rigorous 16-week plan. So here behind that, you see the link there. Uh, when I open the link, that's a uh, Google Doc, which I now share back the days I used to have a PDF plan, but Google Docs, I think it's a bit more efficient. Oh, I'm signed out here, um, but it doesn't really matter whether I'm signed in here or not, right? Uh, everybody can see it with the link, and you see that we have on the first page here seven um, weeks presented, the first, the first um, meeting, so to say, the first session is scheduled for the 5th of September 22. That's the introduction and overview session. In the first week, you um, in the first week you see you should get started with finance with Python, tools and skills, data types uh, and structures, AI and finance. Then you have optional materials. And what you also see here is that I don't mention mathematics basics, right? Um, either you want to get started in the very beginning with mathematics basics, or you say, well, every week my schedule allows to cover two classes in this context. The best, if we can think of a perfect world, would be that you go to mathematics uh, basics first and then get started with week one. But I'm uh, pretty sure that not everybody can accommodate this uh, with their schedule. And so we move on here through the weeks until we reach week 12 of the formal uh, program here, uh, which is followed by four weeks of practice and study. So there are two practice modules, and uh, based on the two practice modules, you can verify your understanding of the different topics. They are focused on the core classes here, right? And you maybe want to review certain aspects, right? You are fully flexible during these two weeks. And then you have the study and you have the uh, final project phase, right? If you want to immediately get started, some uh, take quite a bit longer. This will be the rigid plan, but you can say, for example, as I pointed out before, if you want to do reinforcement learning for finance much later, that's not a big deal. This um, shouldn't be any issue in this context. So that's the program which starts officially at the 5th of September. And then we have here, for some of you who might rather want to follow along the, um, in particular for the platinum package, this holds true here, the self-paced study plan. This is the recommendation, right? When I open this, this is another Google doc, the self-paced one here for the, um, for the platinum package, this is structured uh, roughly into three trimesters, uh, 12 weeks. So I recommend you starting with asset management first and the tools and skills part in finance. And here you see the math basics module uh, written out. Then to in the second trimester, go into algorithmic trading, cover financial data science, AI and finance, moving on with math basics and crypto. Right, and in the third trimester, focus on the computational finance part um, with more general data science topics such as Python for Excel, Python for databases, etc. This is a recommendation once you have the content and you say, well, for example, Python for Excel is for me the most important element. Why not getting started with Python for Excel? For sure, that's possible. Um, same holds true for the other classes. You can structure it, but I have structured here the study plan uh, from my point of view, which gives kind of like a sensible selection for the first, second, and third trimester, and which also gives a sensible uh, structure for what best builds on top of what other class, right? So that was the idea here in the, um, in the structuring and in the provision of this study plan. But again, feel free to come up with your own study plan. And uh, as long as you follow your study plan, I think that's the, the most important uh, criterion, right? If you can stick to it and if you follow it, that's uh, the major thing of a study plan.
right? So you have it all, you have the flexibility to change. What can you expect in terms of approach? Yeah, our guiding principles are Python first. So it's not that our program is called something like master's program in finance uh, in, in parentheses by the use of Python, right? It's not finance first, it's Python first. We teach a ton of finance, uh, but with regard to the question that we have before with regard to quantum finance, right? It's not that we try to come up with a, a, the most comprehensive finance curriculum, we try to come up with the most comprehensive Python curriculum and cast this against the background of the, the finance topics that we consider most important and where we also see maybe some, um, yeah, some competitive edge as compared to others. It's all pretty specific, right? Uh, specific meaning that the algorithms used and examples shown are in general specific in nature and they are not meant to provide an exhaustive overview. So it's Python, it's implementation first, right? Not theory first, right? It's implementation first and, and practical consideration play a role and we keep it usually as specific as possible. On the other hand, we try to keep it as reproducible as possible. So basically all examples, not all, all, but the large majority of our examples based on static data files so that you can replicate what is done in the video, what I'm doing live, what you find, let's say, in some documentation that you can replicate this. And this is a, um, a lesson learned and I could say a hard lesson learned, right? Um, taking control over the data files was one of the best things I decided for in the recent past because it helps everybody involved in such a learning exercise. So last but not least, it should be practical. I have already commented on the uh, on the um, the skills that you should be able to acquire, and that you should be able to also transfer your skills to other areas, which might be close but not exactly the same to what we cover there. Right? Acquire coding and other practical skills is the main goal. It's not some theoretical insights on a management level that you say, "Well, I know that Python can do this, but unfortunately, I don't know exactly how to do." right? Skill acquisition is indispensable and this is what we focus on. And if you're interested in, in my thinking and in the background of my thinking in this regard, uh, you might want to have a look at the wonderful book, Peak Secrets from the New Science of uh, Expertise. It's a wonderful book. You will also um, yeah, be provided with uh, sets of review questions for the different uh, core classes. Plus, um, the other major classes in this context, this allows you uh, to step by step go through what you have covered in the classes and to review for yourself how good your class of the materials uh, presented is at a certain point in time. And then you might want to go back and say, well, oh, re really good question. Um, uh, well, I just need to read chapter X, Y, that again in order to recall what exactly is important there. So this is more like guidance, guidelines, questions that you can answer for yourself or you write it down. This is not really about coding, this is for you meant as a review exercise. But we provide also uh, simple uh, exercises, more involved exercises, simple ones are close to what we present, the more involved ones are not that close and also some test projects, some of them are a bit more fun, some of them are real finance applications which would require you to spend a bit more time with that, right? So this is what we also provide and uh, the, um, the tutorial start on week two already and then you can work through the different areas. You don't, you're not expected to go through everything that we offer there. Uh, but uh, you should do your best and, and because this shows you really whether you have an idea of what happens there or whether you indeed have mastered a certain skill, right? That's here the benchmark. If you get stuck with whatever, you have 24-7 access to the user forum. I've shown this on the platform, right? You can post your questions. Maybe you want to first search in the forum. Somebody else might have had the same question, the same issue, the same problem, right? Um, or you post another question um, then here on the board to start a new thread. Please make sure that you follow the guidelines. So when you click create new board, um, you're supposed to confirm that you stick to the guidelines for doing a post in the forum. Meaning, for example, you should generate a minimum verifiable uh, example that replicates your very issue 
sometimes people say, oh, well, in session seven um, of this class, um, I do the same what you are doing, but I get different results. What can I do? Well, this is really generic, might be a real issue, might be troubling you. <laughs> you might note that when I express it that way, it's difficult to help somebody in that way. So it must be, uh, should be minimal, must be complete, right? So that everybody else can really replicate what the issue is and uh, must be verifiable so that we can uh, then come up with a solution to the very issue. Otherwise, it is pretty difficult. The Discord server is yeah, for live chat. So we also do Discord sessions, uh, meaning uh, Q&A sessions, where you can upfront send your questions or you come live into the session, you ask your questions. But this is not meant as a technical support form. This is like here, that's the reason why I highlighted. And here you see a thread with regard to a couple of questions um, concerned with the preparation of final projects. Don't worry at the beginning about the final project. This has time until the end of the formal 12 weeks program is reached or where you say, I feel now ready for the final project. But this is the type of discussion, the type of questions that should be answered um, in the Discord uh, um, forum, Discord server, right? Uh, not technical ones like, uh, I have this bit of Python code, why? Can they make it work, right? This is for the user form. User form is technical support. Discord server is um, asynchronous and real-time live chat about everything else that is beyond technical questions. See how about finance, hardware, coding in general, uh, delegates that might exchange certain ideas, additional resources, career advice. We recently had the boot camp where there were a couple of questions. So this is what Discord server is about as usual with these platforms, of course, 24 seven. So this brings me to the end. And if you have questions uh, over <laughs> that you want uh, me to answer, now it's a good time to post them so that I can have a look at them. And whenever you see me looking to the left, that's where I try to have a peek at uh, potential questions. I want to keep the summary short and brief. If you have detailed questions, um, um, about the program. You can reach out anytime by email. Um, we are more than happy to answer them. You find a lot of information also on our webpage, for example, in the different PDF-based uh, uh, brochures that we uh, have compiled for the four different programs. So the, the three um, ones with the single classes plus the platinum package, which combines the three into one large program. So feel free to reach out. But in summary, I want to emphasize the following. So I think these days it is hard to argue against the following. Python is the number one skill in banking, trading, investing, and finance in general. Um, this is really what people are looking for these days, right? Uh, because it's necessary in almost any function these days. And it's not that simple to teach people, uh, let's say within a two weeks course, right? So if you have, if you maybe get started in a finance department, a uh, special topic um, that you haven't mastered so far, you maybe want to go to a, to a crash course and you master the basics within two weeks because you simply need to internalize know how. Uh, but as I emphasize now a couple of times, I talk here about skill, not about know-how and knowledge, right? It's a skill and skill simply needs practice and practice is gained over the course of many weeks, many months, sometimes even years, right? Therefore, uh, this is why uh, recruiters and HR departments are so eager to now hire people with this skill already in good shape. Maybe maybe not black belt level, but uh, let's say at least purple or brown belt level is what they uh, like to see here in an ideal case, right? Our certificate programs now teach you all the major Python and machine learning for finance skills in a systematic and comprehensive fashion. I'm pretty sure if you uh, look long around on the web, you can pick up bits and pieces that are similar to what we provide, but it's hardly ever in a systematic and comprehensive fashion. So you can be sure because I'm the one who has designed the whole program and the whole content, 
that this is um, yeah, systematic and it's also consistent with each other in this context. And I would say it's the most comprehensive that you can find. The skills you learn here help you in accelerating your career in finance as well as in building your own fintech and trading style. We have more and more people who reach out and say, well, I want to build, let's say, a little algo training job or I want to get started on the side with building my own algo training desk or I have this fintech idea, I just had a an inquiry, right? Uh, FinTech ID, I want to get started uh, with that and the Python skills are now the one that I need to uh, build. Um, but again, if you are um, on a career path or want to change your career path in finance, this is for sure a good investment and not only trust me an expense in that context, uh, you will benefit uh, from my point tremendously. And last but not least, uh, what I want to emphasize beyond the content that we offer, you have indefinite access to the content itself, to all your resources, right? As well as to the user forum and the Discord server. So we see this more like a community and uh, we have delegates um, that might have participated in a program like two years, three years ago that are still active in the user forum that here and there uh, jump on the Discord server and, and help out or simply participate in uh, discussions or show up to see what new resources are on the server, etc. So this is all happening and uh, this is how we would like to have it, namely as a community and not like something where you get started with us at a certain date and then we say, well, thank you, that was it, now we close your account and wish you all the best. It's more that we would like to have you come back, um, basically. And yeah, be part of the community and benefit from what is happening on our platform in this context. Yeah, let me check with regard to the questions there are. Um, a few more. Um, and yes, uh, during the 12 week program, there will be live sessions. Uh, usually, there, uh, there are more than one live session only in the, in the, um, uh, 16 week study plan, I've just shown the one that is fixed already. So we go soon in the planning phase for the other live sessions, but usually you will get informed the week before the next study week, and then we send out the invites, and this will be yeah, based on go to webinar like uh, the platform that we use right now. Good question. Yeah, there's somebody asking with regard to what the industry is willing to pay for these skills. That's, of course, pretty um, um, difficult to say um, because it's just one part of, uh, let's say, a career. It depends on uh, where you stand in your career and what your background is, right? Um, I would say the, um, our program is a major and important building block when you want to um, uh, follow career in finance, particularly in quantitative finance and trading, right? Uh, but of course, it depends on what other degrees you have gained, whether you are already active in the field and want to turbocharge your career now, or whether you are coming from another domain and want to shift into that domain, what kind of senior level you're in. Uh, but uh, depending on the area, when you think in terms of hedge funds, and uh, just recently um, I got approached whether I would knew um, a senior. Um, developer uh, maybe would help out with building a crypto hedge fund and the salary a play was 250,000 US per year. So, um, and this was not the most senior position that they had on offer, right? Uh, you can earn a lot, but again, don't uh, uh, yeah, take this number now as a given. Uh, this is just uh, as a benchmark for what you can earn in the field if you are good, but you need to show uh, proven skills, you need to build maybe your project portfolio on GitHub, for example, and of course it doesn't hurt if you have a background in the field. Um, if you are already, let's say, an analyst, an asset manager, and you want to move on, you want to become a portfolio manager, let's say, and so on and so on. Therefore, uh, overall, it depends on um, the whole package, but this for sure is like a major building block if you think that Python finance uh, might be or is for sure <laughs> you might know it already uh, one of the key skills um, that is required for uh, the position that you have um, yeah that you have been watching out for right yeah this seems to be now um, 
it in terms of the questions. I can't see any um, open questions in this regard. For me, it then remains to wrap up and um, to again emphasize, you can reach out at any time, for example, via training at tpq.io um, and ask any questions that you might have. We currently have super early bird pricing, which will expire soon. So you should hurry up if you want to get the best deal uh, for signing up to our programs. And if you have other questions, for example, if you think you might qualify for an additional discount, like a student discount or an academic discount, then you should also reach out via email training at tpq.io. And in any case, I hope to see you in one of our programs. And until that, I wish you all the best. Take care. Bye-bye.